Jacqueline Howard here. Think of the person you love. Now think of that person with someone else. Mm-mm, no way, right? But cheating is a lot more common than you may think. About half of all marriages may be affected by infidelity. Sure, you may think something's up if your partner's habits change, they're coming home late from work, constantly checking their phone, but wouldn't it be so much easier if you can spot a cheater just from a first impression? Are there any scientific warning signs? They're strange, but they're there. For the nitty gritty, I called sexuality researcher Dr. Robin Milhausen and neuroscientist Dr. Giovanni Frazetto. Here's a rundown of some scientific warning signs that may mean your partner is statistically more likely to cheat. Women prefer men with lower pitched voice, but they are also more likely consider them to be a risk for being unfaithful. So women are particularly likely to be interested in men with lower pitched voices, deeper voices for casual relationships versus long-term relationships. Did you catch that? In heterosexual relationships, women prefer men with deeper voices for the short term because a deep voice is an indicator that a man has lots of testosterone and research has linked high levels of testosterone with likeliness to cheat. Whether your partner is a man or a woman, we all would love it if they had an impressive job, Harvard degree, made more than six figures. But those things have been linked with a higher risk of infidelity. On the flip side, one study found that in heterosexual relationships, the more financially dependent the man is on his female partner, the more likely he is to cheat. For women, the more dependent they are, the less likely. Curious, I know. But one study found it's a worrisome sign because he actually might go looking for a risky affair just to boost his arousal. After all, a new partner wouldn't know about his condition and so he'd feel less insecure. If you're worried you might lose your erection at any point, you might need to put yourself into really high arousing situations. Those might be really risky, really exciting, and, and those be, situations might be with a novel or forbidden partner. Most religious faiths encourage sticking by your partner, and it turns out many folks are practicing what they preach. People who are more religious or spiritual are less likely to cheat. People who have no religious affiliation are more likely. It's true. Researchers say in both men and women, personality can predict infidelity. But what exactly should we be looking out for? Those typically tend to be negative types of personality traits, neuroticism, psychoticism, um, moodiness, anxiety, these kinds of personality factors do tend to be associated with infidelity. You may think after experiencing divorce as a kid, you never want to go through that again. But for all of us, research suggests that kids of divorced parents are more likely to end their own marriages. Does that mean divorce is genetic? No. But tendency to cheat just may be linked to our genes. Maybe. So you cannot say that a gene makes you infidel or makes you more likely to cheat on your partner. And there are some clues that come from the gene variant of a receptor, a receptor for the neurotransmitter dopamine. Dopamine is the feel-good neurotransmitter that makes us euphoric. One study found that people who carry a particular version of a dopamine receptor gene may be more likely to sleep around. So does that mean we should all go in for a gene test? Maybe not, but what about a more high-tech way to screen for a cheater, like a brain scan? A brain scan cannot reveal whether you're going to cheat on your partner. Got it. Now let's get to the million dollar question. Why is it so difficult for some of us just to be faithful? Are humans really monogamous? Since the beginning of time, people have been having extra dyadic sexual relationships in, in history, um, back to caveman times. But also, at the same time, you've seen evidence of pair bonds where couples get together and raise families and are together in that pair bond for decades on end as well. So I think that answer is it depends. It depends on all those other factors we talked about, your personality, uh, your demographic characteristics, and the opportunities you have. What are your thoughts on infidelity? Have you been inclined to cheat in the past or have you been cheated on? Let me know in the comments. Don't be shy. Talk nerdy to me.